From our studios at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting, brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corp. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Derek Ridenauer, and our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business with the world's largest retailer. Thank you for joining us, and coming up today, I'll be talking with David Hale of GigWalk, and reviewing this week's top news stories with me are Ross Cully and Andy Shook. But first, the headlines. Walmart Labs recently announced the acquisition of Seattle-based Yumprint, a recipe-building social network, and Walmart plans to integrate the service with its expanding grocery program. According to a recent story in GeekWire, Yumprint users can use the service to store recipes found online, search for recipes, plan menus in advance, and develop shopping lists based on their selected meals. Walmart Mexico Chief Financial Officer announced that Walmart plans to spend 15 billion pesos, that's just over $1 billion, on its Mexican operations, according to a recent Reuters story. Roughly half of this amount will go towards opening new stores, increasing its floor space in Mexico by just over 5%. Some bad news for Walmart on the customer service front. Wall Street 24-7 reports that Walmart earned a score of just 71 on the American Customer Satisfaction Index, giving it the dubious distinction of ranking number one on the list of major retailers with the worst customer service. Interestingly, customer service scores at brick and mortar retailers have generally increased of late. Fewer customers in stores seems to translate into a better in-store shopping experience. Retailing Today report that Sam's Club has announced that it has a new VP of healthcare. David Bedeen is a company veteran who began his Walmart career of nearly three decades working as a pharmacy manager. Since then, Bedeen has held several roles within the organization and moved to Bentonville in 1993. He'll be reporting to Jill, Jill Turner Mitchell, Senior Vice President of Health and Wellness. Slate reports that Walmart appears to be playing coy on the issue of federal minimum wage increase. Recently, a Walmart spokesperson indicated that Walmart was, quote, looking at, end quote, support of an increase, though now Walmart appears to be insisting that it is neutral on the matter. One minimum wage activist argues that Walmart may be staying mum for political reasons. We'll keep you updated on developments in this story. For over a decade, Walmart has been the sole brick and mortar distributor of All You, a magazine dedicated to helping women save money through coupons and budgeting tips. But all that is about to change. Adwick reports that All You is rolling out in stores, sales at Barnes & Noble, Kmart, and Kroger stores. The decision to expand distribution beyond Walmart is in part due to ongoing consumer concerns about the economy and a broader interest in finding ways to save. Check out Walmart and Supplier News as is reported on walmartnewsnow.com. And we're joined now by our panel, Ross Cully from the Harvest Group and Andy Shook from Shook Up Sales. Thanks, guys. Big report out this week, or a um, customer report showing that Walmart's not doing as well in the customer service. They were uh, down, or I guess they were same as what they've been. Any surprise by this, Ross? I'm not. I think when you look at this report, you have to dig a couple layers below to see what the real story is. And what mm -hmm. I saw is that Walmart scores really didn't change that much if you look over the last several years. Uh, to me, the story, as I looked into it, was Target. And uh, Target's customer satisfaction scores went down quite a bit. Uh, do you think that's because of stores, or do you think that's because of the fiasco that kind of happened over December with the credit card situation? Or I, I definitely think it's the credit card. I think, <laughs> I think it is, too. I definitely sure, do that. that. No, I, I, I agree. I don't think there's really that much of a surprise. I mean, if you look at the last five years, not a whole lot has really changed as far as an experience within Walmart. Um, you know, you, you go in, and, and it's still pretty much that same type of an experience. So I can't imagine that it would go up or down. I mean, the one thing that, that you will notice at the stores, and one of the things that we've talked about on this show before, is just, you know, the number of ch check registers open, um, the type of on-the-shelf availability with product on the shelves and all that, it's all stayed about the same. It doesn't feel like it's changed as, as much as it maybe should. Right. Well, we did reach out to Walmart, and they sent us a statement. They said, striving for excellence and serving our customers is at the core of everything we do. We are more committed than ever to improving our customers' shopping experiences and are actively taking steps to ensure our more than 140 million weekly customers leave our stores feeling satisfied. So 140 million people a week coming into the store, you're obviously not going to make all of those happy. Even 71% of the time, if you're making them happy, you're, uh, I would consider that kind of a win for them. Yeah, no so. doubt. And I think you look at the retailers that are at the top. You got Publix, you got Whole Foods, retailers that that's what they're known for. And, and to your point, they're at a scale where they can still right. do that very, very well. 
Okay. When there's still 140 million people coming each week. So exactly. Obviously, they're, they're not still, all men. No, and they're, they're, they're still going to come back to Walmart. That's right. All right. I want to move on to the next topic, minimum wage. Slate reported this mm -hmm. week that Walmart has kind of come out neutral on that, which I think many people were surprised. Ross, are you surprised by this? Uh, a little bit. Um, you know, there's a lot going on here. You've got the court of public opinion. You've got the political arena. You've got Walmart's labor costs that are involved here, and then you have the Walmart consumer, which is they've they've said in their their recent earnings report is under a phenomenal amount of financial pressure, and so a lot of competing issues going on. I would like to see Walmart lead out on the issue and not be neutral mm -hmm. um, personally. And uh, I think about Henry Ford and what he did. Bloomberg reported about when he took his. Uh, labor wages up and how it really created a middle class that could afford the product they were making, the Model T. And so I think it would be uh, interesting if Walmart did that from an equity score standpoint with the consumer. But how does that factor in, if you're going to be a low cost leader, how does that factor in, if, if they were to go out and double their wages, for example, how does that, how does that play in and what's the public perception there, Andy? Uh, I mean, so take it all the way to 1010. Have Walmart be the leader and take it all the way there. When I say lead, I, in yeah. terms of support, supporting, supporting, supporting the issue. Oh, supporting the issue. Okay. Yeah. And right now they're neutral on it. You know, I, I think, you know, when, when you look at the minimum wage and raising it all the way up that quickly. Which is $2.85 over the next three years is the proposal. And that, I mean, that's a lot of money. And, and to your point, you know, if you look at, at, at them be trying to be an everyday low price leader and they're going to pay their people a lot more, you know, there's, there's got to be a balance there. And I don't know right. what the perception would be. Well, I mean, and but and Walmart's you, already paying their people already paying. pretty well. I mean, there are very few, again, in my experience in, in being in stores for seven years, um, they're already paying a lot of these people above minimum wage. There's only a handful right. of jobs in the store that are minimum wage. I mean, you're not going to bring somebody in and pay a minimum wage to sit in the office and process millions of dollars in bills uh, and, pro and payments. Yeah. So they're already above that. Yeah. I, I don't know... If this, I mean, there's a ripple effect because if you're making eight dollars an hour and minimum wage goes up, you're going to take go to the minimum. But if you're making ten, fifteen, you're not getting anything. Which is the calculus that I have as I look at the issues. I don't know how much it impacts their labor. Uh, I don't think it's as much as maybe one would think. Um, I think it, the biggest impact I see is to their consumer, and their consumer is under a tremendous amount of pressure. And I think putting that do those dollars in their wallet. With that demographic, they're going to spend that money, right? And uh, and I think that that's good for Walmart. And I agree with you completely because mm -hmm. if I'm sitting at Walmart, this is a way to grow that middle class and grow the lower income shopper, which is kind of Walmart's core that now may have more disposable income. But Andy, I want to come to you because if everybody's going up, you know manufacturers are going to go up. So does that translate into higher costs on the shelf? Well, I don't know that the manufacturers are necessarily going to be spending that much more, you know, for their people. Although, although I guess in some in some of the cases of the warehouses and whatnot, you're going to be paying some of the people more. But but I think where it's really in effect is going to be outside of that, you know, especially in retail establishment, food establishments, all of that. They're going to be paying a, quite a bit higher wages, you know, right. for people starting out that. So I mean, I think it could affect. But here, I've got a question. I got a question for you guys. Okay. So politically, because you said the political thing, yeah. where do you guys stand on this issue? Because either for it or against it. As far as the minimum wage thing goes, I mean, I'm kind of I'm, okay. I'm kind of in letting the marketplace decide and determine it, right? I, I'm with you. I, I think that less government regulation is best, and I think that, and again, I traveled all over the country and international with Walmart, and consistently saw that we adapted wages. We did wage surveys before we ever got to the market, mm -hmm. before I ever got there. So we knew where the wages came in, and we wanted to pay, pay something that was comparable. We saw it in Washington D.C. as Walmart opened up the three stores. They had thousands of people applying for jobs. Yep. There were three stores, maybe 1,500 jobs total, but you have 10,000 people coming in to apply. Actually, I think it was more like 23,000. So Walmart's not paying that low or they wouldn't be attracting those people. But I'm, I am against it. I think that the marketplace should dictate it. Yeah, also a free market fan. Uh, to me, the, the question is, when you do the math and the calculus uh, for the American economy, how does, how does it play out? And I think for Walmart, they're in an interesting position from an industry standpoint because I think I, I don't think it impacts their payroll as much as it could impact their customer base. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also a tax increase because wages go up, Medicare taxes, Social Security Social taxes Security go up taxes as well. Up. So is this a way for the government to try to get some additional money from the businesses? Exactly. Yeah. Because employers are going to pay this. It's not just a matter of going up 285 uh, over the three years. It's also those added taxes that are mm -hmm. going to be up there. 
Okay, quickly, we've got about two minutes left. Wanted to get into Walmart's acquisition of Yumprint, a uh, Seattle-based company. So they kind of went right into Amazon's backyard and Costco's backyard and hired a company away. Uh, what do you see the benefits for uh, for Walmart for this and for the consumer? Andy, I'll start with you. Well, you know, when you go in and look at Yumprint, <coughs> I'd never heard of it before. Um, it looked a lot like this program that my daughter has. She's a millennial, so she fits right in, you know, with with this group that that this Which was fit they want to get. Yeah, exactly. So it's called Food on the Table, and this type of program allows her to um, look for a recipe and then find out what items she has at home, and then it'll tell her what she needs to get at the store. So okay. it kind of helps her in her shopping when she goes out. She'll know which items she has to go out and get when she's out there. This one looks similar, not exactly the same, but it's similar in that you know you've got recipes in there, um, and when you go into the store, it might show you that there's an advertisement going on, or there's something, uh, there's a rollback, or something's happening, or maybe it's a new item that's come into the store. And it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it looks like a great program and a great way for people to shop with using okay. their cell phones um, and or their you know. Um, their Ross, you got about thirty seconds. I think it's really smart. When you look at the integration of the smartphone with the shopping trip and the millennials, I think it's a smart move. I also like the ownership that they, they get with Yum Print, former McKinsey partner and a Microsoft engineer. So they should be able to help them actually execute this technology mm. that which, they purchased. Which is something they've somewhat struggled with. It. And, and I think Walmart's behind it now, but we'll see if that how it plays out. All right, guys, thank you very much. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to sit down with David Hale from GigWalk and find out how they may be able to help you improve your business as well as give you a part-time job. It's all coming up. Saturday morning meeting continues. Imagine what it would be like if you knew the weather up to a year in advance. What would you do differently for your business or your life? At Weather Trends, we don't imagine it. We do it. We're a team of meteorologists, mathematicians, and business weather advisors. And we've spent the last 20 years developing a new way to forecast months in advance. We've been studying weather's effect on product sales based on every one degree change in temperature. We can now take your sales data and show you exactly how the weather impacts your business down to a single degree. We're leading the way into a new era in forecasting and a new power in business decisions. And we invite you to join us. Welcome to Weather Trends. GigWalk is an on-demand mobile workforce that can collect data and do work at retail. Businesses use GigWalk for retail audits, merchandising, and much more. With 350,000 smartphone-enabled workers available on-demand, you get unprecedented speed and coverage across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. And all work is reviewed for quality and accuracy. Visit GigWalk.com to learn more. Experience the unique cooling sensation of frozen yogurt. New Dial Frozen Yogurt Body Wash. Wrap your skin in cooling moisture. For skin so refreshingly soft, people will notice. Dial. Healthier skin, healthier you. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit BeaverWatershedAlliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers, for suppliers. Eighth and Walton. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We're joined now by David Hale. He is the Vice President of Business Development at GigWalk. David, thanks for uh, coming in. Now, we've seen commercials of GigWalk. We know a little bit about them, but let's, let's start at the very top. What does GigWalk do and how does it help? So, uh, GigWalk uh, helps large brands and retailers uh, get better visibility in what's going on in real time in their stores. And let's, a little bit about your background because sure. you are relatively brand new to GigWalk. What's your background and, and how did you get into this? Yeah, so, so my background is I uh, just came, I was a CIO of a, a large company that did software as a service for supply chain. And one interesting thing I found is that supply chain for big companies like Boeing and Dell is all about visibility. 
And the, the interesting thing that I'm finding as I move into retail is that retail is all about visibility too. People, you need to know what's going on in real time in the stores on the ground. Now you guys are yeah. not really a retail services company. And when I say that, I mean um, like the Crossmarks and the Acostas. So you don't have merchandisers. You guys do it a little bit differently. Let's talk about how GigWalk is different from the Crossmarks and the Acostas and the Advantage of retail services that are out there. So GigWalk is, is really a software platform, and that software plat platform is used um, to give better visibility to retailers and brands about what's going on in their stores. And the way we do that is actually pretty cool. So we have, we, we use this. So we use the cell phone, and we enable a very large force of over 400,000 people across the country that have GPS-enabled, networked cell phones to use those phones to give visibility to the brands and retailers about what's happening in the store. And it's from a consumer standpoint, right? I mean, so your team is not going to be going into the back room and pulling stuff out, much like some of the other retail services are. But I see that almost as an advantage to you because your team is going to see what the shopper sees and what the consumer sees. Mm -hmm. What are some of the benefits to so, that? So let me talk about how this might work if you were a supplier to Walmart. Um, so what you would do is you would post a job to GigWalk and we would call it a gig. So for example, a gig might be, I want to understand what brands of shampoo are on the shelf in a thousand Walmart stores across the, across the country. And then a, a person uh, that wants to get paid for doing that job would download the application. They would then look to see what jobs are available or gigs are available in their area. They would apply to do those gigs, they would do the work and they would get paid. And then on the supplier side, the supplier would then see what um, that information in real time as people complete it, as people take the pictures, as people answer questions about the shampoo brands, for example. And this isn't just for a supplier being able to see visibility, what's out there, what's on the shelf, am I there, am I not? This can also be kind of a complement if you're using Crossmark or Costa. You can almost bring this in as, as a secondary or as a backup or even as a primary way to indicate to those those service companies, hey, here's a group of stores that may need some help, so let's make that a priority. Exactly right. So if you're, a, if you're Crossmark, you want to give good visibility to your customers. And in fact, uh, to be honest, you know, many of the brands use different uh, merchandising companies, and they want to have visibility as to what those people are doing in, in the stores. But what we do is we provide a platform for communicating that information for, um, and also for ensuring that the the information has been done at the right time and in the right place because it's geofenced, um, specifically in the store where the work is supposed to be done. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want to continue our conversation um, and talk about some Super Bowl events that you guys had. So we'll mm -hmm. continue our conversation with David Hale when we come back on Saturday morning meeting. All right, all right. New TV. Hi, TV. Did he just say hi to the TV? Uh-huh. Wait, is this Hulu from the computer Hulu? It's Hulu Plus. Uh, this looks cool. Which one of you yahoos put our TV on the curb? Oh, hello. What are we watching? Bathing monkeys. Uh, no, those are macaques. Get out of my seat. Looks relaxing. TV has never been better. This is Smart TV from Samsung. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, Retail logistics is what we do. Their business model is suppliers teaching suppliers. So when you come to 8th and Walton, you can count on having very experienced trainers who understand how suppliers work within Walmart, and they take advantage of that and incorporate that into their curriculum. You know, the biggest challenge of working with Walmart is they really expect everyone on the team to know their language, know their terminology, and know exactly how they do business. So that's where 8th and Walton really comes into play. You know, it's the fastest way to get my team members up to speed. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. 
With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit BeaverWatershedAlliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. I'm Andrea. I'm a 2011 UA graduate with a degree in elementary education. Single Parent Scholarship Fund made that possible. My son Jaden is proud of his mama and it's inspired him to do well in school. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Media. We are continuing our conversation with David Hale. He is the uh, Vice President of Business Development with GigWalk. And before we went to break, we talked about some Super Bowl events because Pepsi, obviously a very big s sponsor of this year's Super Bowl. Uh, but you guys had a chance to do some, uh, some stuff at retail for them. Let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. So leading up to the Super Bowl, uh, Pepsi had very large displays with Pepsi and the uh, Fritos in particular. If you walk into any Safeway, Walmart, you'd see this massive uh, display of all their uh, products and uh, what they asked us to do is to audit across 6,000 stores whether those displays were set up correctly and so we did that and where they weren't set up correctly we were able to give them information about uh, uh, where they needed to be correct uh, corrected so it's real-time information and also gives them feedback about how to fix them where it's not right so and you guys aren't just exclusive to a particular retailer you do this very geographically Mm -hmm. So plays in very well to regional brands, mm -hmm. uh, some, certainly something that they could do. I want to put something out there. If you're, obviously the big companies, the P&Gs, Unilever, the Craft, have a, a pretty hefty budget when it comes to doing merchandising and retail services. But the, the smaller regional suppliers certainly have more room to grow, but may not have the budgets to do that. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that GigWalk can do to help them? For example, if I've got a $20,000 budget or a $10,000 mm -hmm. budget, what are some things that GigWalk can present and show me and really help me spend that money wisely to get a good ROI, which mm -hmm. return on investment? So for, obviously for the large brands, we have quite good coverage and a great platform to service them. But for smaller brands also, um, we have good geographic coverage and we also have a couple kind of uh, uh, standard products, if you call them, where we can audit either events that might be happening across a number of stores or things that might be happening on the shelf um, over a period of time. So we think about it in terms of locations, what you want to audit, frequency, and then basic questions. And we have those kind of stock questions for planogram execution and so on. Now planogram is how the merchandise is laid out on mm -hmm. the shelf and the real estate. Okay, um, so what are some other services that you may be able to offer Again, if I don't have a whole lot of money, I, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time where they're going in and checking, getting into the details, because obviously you're not going in the back room. Um, but why do I need to pick, as a supplier, why do I need to pick GigWalk? Yeah. So probably the biggest reason is it's, it's real-time, um, on-the-ground feedback about what's happening in the store. So when you go to GigWalk, we're able to immediately publish a gig to a large geographic area and then get very quick feedback to you about what's happening in the store. So it's not just information that you might use uh, for information's sake, it's actually information you can act on. I want to change, kind of change topics a little bit because you guys have gotten some, some good press nationally recently. Um, you're, you're offering some jobs when a lot of companies seem to be scaling back. Now granted some of these are independent contractors, but let's talk about some of the success stories that you guys have seen and the people who've signed up and become contractors. Let's talk about some of those success stories because you've had some really good, good ones uh, that have been highlighted in the media, mm -hmm. particularly a wedding. Yeah, so yeah, one of the things that drew me to the company is that the company's got a really good heart. Uh, and by that I mean a lot of people are there because we have a, a, a software platform, we're a software company that has given people the opportunity to make some money where they really need the money. And so there's uh, one woman who made enough money to pay for a wedding. Uh, another uh, person uh, made enough money to pay for uh, her son's braces. And uh, there, there's another story that came out recently about a man that just needed some money to make ends meet through the end of the month. And, uh, and then we also, we do other things uh, for the community. We try to give, give back with our, with our software platform as well. And some of the good things about this is, 
you're not tied to a schedule. So if I want to if I want to get a gig and, and be able to go do some of this, it's really kind of on my schedule when I get to do it. But it's also easy because if I'm going shopping, taking the kids shopping, or my wife's going out, we can do that while we're while we're shopping. Yes. So th there was a new story. Uh, I think it was a gig locker in Atlanta uh, um, last year sometime, and he did exactly that. So he was able to make a little bit of money in his own time by doing audits at the beginning of the and, and the end of the day on his way to and from work. All right. Final. We have about a minute left here. We're going to wrap up. But hmm. what are some things that that I should know as a supplier? And I'm trying to grow my business. I'm trying to drive sales. Bottom line, how are you going to help me do it? So I think bottom line is we have a uh, the largest uh, mobile-enabled network of independent contractors of any of the companies that do similar things to what we do. So there are over 400,000 people that have downloaded our app, either for the iPhone or the Android, and are out there just doing gigs. And that's a network of independent contractors that's available to people that need to get real-time information on store execution. And not only just get the information, but actually act on it. Okay. David Hale, Vice President of Business Development with GigWalk, thank you very much for coming in. We will be right back. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location for businesses working with the world's largest retailer. Bentonville Plaza offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area, including custom-designed suites and an on-site fitness center and restaurant. Pre-leasing opportunities are currently available for new construction. Call 479-200-1112 today. Discover our revolutionary lotion-infused body wash, New Dial Vitamin Boost, and wrap your skin in nourishing softness. For healthy, soft skin, people will notice. Dial. Healthier skin, healthier you. 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers, for suppliers. 8th and Walton. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit beaverwatershedalliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. I'm Andrea. I'm a 2011 UA graduate with a degree in elementary education. Single Parent Scholarship Fund made that possible. My son Jaden is proud of his mama and it's inspired him to do well in school. I would recommend Ethan Walton to other suppliers because from my experience talking to other suppliers, they were even learning new ideas or just new and better business practices. Most people have little time for training and so Ethan Walton is a perfect opportunity to send your new employees to understand the retailing system and again because trainers were suppliers, they know the how and the why so they become very valuable very quickly. Our thanks to David Hale of GigWalk and today's panelists as well. And as always, thank you for taking the time to join us. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, we would love to hear from you. Our email address is Saturday at EthanWalton.com. And please join us next week when our featured guest will be Pete Kelly of Salute Vodka. He is getting set for his very first appointment with Sam's Club. We'll talk about some of the fears and apprehensions that he has going into the meeting. I'm Derek Reidenauer, and from all of us at Saturday Morning Meeting, thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday.